Here we go. Help to illuminate that challenge for some. But the dimensions of its threat have loomed large in the horizon for many the publishers as well as editors. I want to talk about our common responsibilities in the face of a common danger. The events of recent weeks may have helped to illuminate that challenge for some, but the dimensions of its threat have loomed large in the horizon for many years. Whatever our hopes may be for the future, for reducing this threat or living with it, there is no escaping either the gravity or the totality of its challenge to our survival and to our security. A challenge that confronts us in unaccustomed ways in every sphere of human activity. This deadly challenge imposes upon our society two requirements of direct concern, both to the press and to the president. Two requirements that may seem almost contradictory in tone, but which must be reconciled and fulfilled if we are to meet this national peril. I refer first to the need for far greater public information, and second, to the need for far greater official secrecy. The very word secrecy is repugnant in a free and open society. And we are as a people... The very word secrecy is repugnant in an open society. Luke chapter 12, verse 3. Therefore, whosoever ye have spoken in darkness shall be heard in the light. And that which ye have spoken in the ear in clauses shall be proclaimed upon the housetops. Inherently and historically opposed to secret societies, to secret oaths, and to secret proceedings. We decided long ago that the dangers of excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating, imitating an arbitrary restriction. You hear that, IUIC? Just because you 2,000 deep marching through the streets, you are very little threat. Very little threat of opposing the threat of a closed society. Matter of fact, JFK, a white man, which you call a Gentile, was more of a threat for this speech than any of you dudes out there marching. Yep. He was more of a threat. That's why they, that's why they bust his head. That's why they killed him. Couldn't, the man couldn't even have a closed casket. They killed this man in front of his family, ladies and gentlemen. In front of his family. Listen to this again. Excessive and unwarranted concealment of pertinent facts far outweigh the dangers which are cited to justify it. Even today, there is little value in opposing the threat of a closed society by imitating its arbitrary restrictions. Even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive. See, even today, there is little value in ensuring the survival of our nation and our traditions do not survive with it. Babylon is falling. It's falling. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. And no official of my administration now watch this security will be seized upon. It says, we gotta hear that part again right there. That's pertinent right there. He says, even today, there's little value in ensuing the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. There's little value in ensuring the survival of our nation if our traditions do not survive with it. And there is very grave danger that an announced need for increased security 
will be seized upon by those anxious to expand its meaning to the very limits of official censorship and concealment. That I do not intend to permit to the extent that it's in my control. He said whatever control he have, where they can't operate in secrecy, in censorship, in hiding, perdition, anything that's in my control where I can stop that and expose it, I will. And no official of my administration, whether his rank is high or low, civilian or military, should interpret my words here tonight as an excuse to censor the news, to stifle dissent, to cover up our mistakes, or to withhold from the press and the public the facts they deserve to know. But I do ask... But I do ask every publisher, every editor, and every newsman in the nation to re-examine his own standards and to recognize the nature of our country's peril. In time of war... So right now he's begging all the newspapers and the media to basically expose what's going on in, in secrecy. And you can make a, a, a small correlation and a small connection to Donald Trump as well. Because Donald Trump, his war, at least what seems to be a war with the media, all right? Going back and forth, calling things fake news and, and things of that nature. You can kind of relate the time we living in right now to John F. Kennedy's time. Not saying that we put more trust in more politicians because that's not the answer clearly but at the very least you can say that donald trump did give you stimulus money he did actually put money in your pocket opposed to all these organizations all these celebrities oprah winfrey and all of these celebrities who claim to be uh you know donate money but you're not seeing anything in your communities at least donald trump put his money where his mouth is and something went in your pockets. So, at the end of the day, it is what it is. The government and the press have customarily joined in an effort based largely on self-discipline to prevent unauthorized disclosures to the enemy. In times of clear and present danger, the courts have held that even the privileged rights of the First Amendment must yield to the public's need for national security. Today, no war has been declared, and however fierce the struggle may be, it may never be declared in the traditional fashion. Our way of life is under attack. Those who make themselves our enemy are advancing around the globe. The survival of our friends is in danger, and yet no war has been declared. No borders have been crossed by marching troops. Y'all hear that? No war has been declared, but there's an imminent danger. There's enemy. There's someone plotting. Let's, let's see what war he's talking about. He's not talking about a war in other places. Nobody crossed any borders. Nobody sunk any battleships. What war is he talking about? No missiles have been fired. If the press is awaiting a declaration of war, before it imposes the self-discipline of combat conditions, then I can only say that no war ever posed a greater threat to our security. If you are awaiting a finding of clear and present danger, then I can only say that the danger has never been more clear and its presence has never been more imminent. It requires a change in outlook, a change in tactics, a change in missions by the government, by the people, by every businessman or labor leader, and by every newspaper. For we are opposed around the world by a monolithic and ruthless conspiracy that relies primarily on covet means for expanding its sphere of influence, on infiltration instead of invasion, on subversion instead of elections, on intimidation instead of free choice, on guerrillas by night, instead of armies by day. It is a system which has conscripted vast human and material resources into the building of a tightly knit, highly efficient machine that combines military, diplomatic, intelligence, economic, scientific, and political operations. 
Its preparations are concealed, not published. Its mistakes are buried, not headlined. Its dissenters are silenced, not praised. No expenditure is questioned, no rumor is printed, no secret is revealed. It conducts the Cold War in short. Man, he just, he just exposed a lot. I mean, he really exposed a lot. I respect that more than a lot of what you're hearing from these so-called leaders these days. And this was coming from what they call a Gentile, a white man, Caucasian man, right? I mean, this speech is straight up fire. Shortly after this man was taken out because of what he said. You're not hearing that type of courage from our people. In fact, our people are linked in with the program. A lot of us. A lot of our people. <clears throat> Let's go back to the scripts. I'm going back to Luke chapter 8 again. Verse 17. For nothing is secret that shall not be made manifest, neither anything hid that shall not be known and come abroad. So it's in our best interest to speak the truth without fear, not get with the program, not follow all these ideologies, all of these uh, political stances. You got a lot of people who are out there who are just in an uproar behind black matters you got a lot of people who have their political stances and feel strongly about them. And it's almost to the point where you meet someone right now, and if you're not screaming black matters, something is wrong with you. You're an alien. You're strange. If you don't stand behind what the media tells you to stand behind. See, if somebody is going to invest a large amount of money into an organization like Black Matter, one can only imagine what it's about. What is it for? All 50 states marching in unison. What if all 50 states was marching through the streets in solidarity for the most high? Not someone you barely knew who was killed. And it's interesting, they, they, they allow you to keep all of the same revolutionary tactics in this televised revolution. Look, they let you keep the red, black, and green. They let you keep everything to give you that revolutionary vibe, right? A lot of our, uh, our grandparents, they looking at this, they're proud right now. But they don't see the hidden hand behind it. See, they'll let you keep all of that, but then they'll replace it with these negative connotations like, I can't breathe. Instead of no justice, no peace, we want freedom, marching for justice. You got, I can't breathe. My hands up, don't shoot. They are spinning this against the people. It's a snare, it's a trap. And I'm gonna tell you this right now. IUIC, their leaders, their organization, their top elders, they are all hypocrites. For anybody who's been following me for a long time, you already know this is not the first time I spoke on them. I had a personal run-in with them years ago. Years ago, years ago. They've been exposed. I've exposed them so many times. I mean, it, and, and trust and believe, they don't say anything because I got a lot of things on them. I'm talking about real, I'm talking about real concrete evidence that points them in the direction of being part of these organizations and these fraternities. Real information.
Let's go back to them scriptures. Ecclesiastes chapter 12, verse 14. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. Y'all not hearing it. For God shall bring every work into judgment with every secret thing, whether it be good or whether it be evil. So while you sitting there and they and they picking you up right before one of these things happen, one of these events take place, and they tell you, listen, we're going to fly you in a plane, we're going to send you to another state, we're going to send you and your family on vacation while all this happening. Only thing we need you to do is say this to the people. That's going to be exposed. All of the lies and treachery, all of the people's lives that a lot of these cults have ruined, and I'm speaking of all cults, it's going to be exposed. Yeah, all you preachers and pulpit pimps who have fleeced the flock out of all of their resources, all you preachers who've been praying for a vaccination, all you preachers while COVID-19 and the coronavirus was taking place and everybody was on lockdown searching for answers, you was tucked away hidden somewhere with nothing to say. All you pastors who are sitting here who allow your churches to be shut down. You allowed your churches to be shut down by your enemies. And now you're watching your, these same enemies have hundreds of thousands of people marching through the streets. And you didn't say a damn thing. That's coming to the light too. Here it is. You can watch George Floyd's funeral on TV. Nobody social distancing. Hardly nobody wearing masks. Everybody all stuck together. And you can't even have church yet in a lot of states. But you pastors are silent. You know why? Because you are part of the program. You are part of the system. Render what is, render what is Caesar's what is Caesar's. And what's the most high is the most high. We know where you stand. It's coming to the light. The lines of the sand have been divided. We know what's going on with you pastors. We know what's going on with you cult leaders. We know. We can see right through y'all 2020 vision. Because guess what? Brothers and sisters who are part of no organizations, brothers and sisters who don't have any handlers, brothers and sisters who were targeted by these organizations, watched, isolated, pricked and prodded at, gang stalked, manipulated, voice the skull technology, I'm talking about harassment, opportunities being closed. These same people are rising up and shining a light on what y'all are doing, the corruption. These same people are still rising up fearless and victorious and still the Most High has given us a voice. Because everything that's done in the dark will be brought to the light. Show up while you're dreaming Nobody, nobody, nobody sees you Nobody, nobody will believe you and every day you try to pick up all the pieces All the memories, they somehow never leave you Nobody, nobody, nobody sees you Nobody, nobody will believe you God only knows what you've been through God only knows what to say about you God only knows how it's killing you But there's a kind of love that God only knows God only knows what you've been through God only knows what you've been through 